Hello everyone to the first Maplam virtual days. Uh, we're still waiting for a couple of people to get on this webinar today, but I think we can perhaps already start with a small introduction in the meantime uh, until everybody is here with us. Um, yeah, well, why have we decided to make this Maplan virtual days? So uh, we as Maplan had troubles, as so many other companies in the last months, to really get in contact with, uh, with our customers, to share our information, to share our expert knowledge, and to just perhaps inform about news, what's happening and what's new at Marplan. And we think this is a very good communication channel to do so now. My name is Martina Kruber, and I'm head of marketing at Marplan, and I'm your host on behalf of Maplan for today's webinar and perhaps also for some of the next webinars. And we are very happy to do these webinars in cooperation with a very young consulting company in the industry with Sioflex. And uh, this is exactly the point of time where I would have handed over the moderation to my colleague Bernd Schrittesser from Sioflex, but unfortunately he can't be with us today since his son yesterday evening was tested positive to Corona. So all the best to him. We will uh, have the chance to see him a little bit later because he will connect remotely and he's doing the Q&A session after our today's speaker, Mr. Michael Bertel. He is chief economist from the VDK, that's the German Association of the Kautschuk Industry or for the Kautschuk Industry. And he will talk about the status and trends in the rubber industry uh, because we think that this is a very hot topic currently for all of us, somehow connected in this industry, especially, of course, for the automotive, for the automotive, automotive industry and all the suppliers. And I guess we're just all affected what's, what will happen within the next months. And I think we shouldn't do more introduction at the moment. I will hand over to Mr. Bertel and we will have the chance to answer some questions after his call. You will have the chance during the next 30 minutes to put your questions into the chat function, which you can find in the middle of the screen at the bottom. And we recommend actually to you that you watch the presentation in full screen mode. Just double click your Zoom window and it will get into full screen mode because then we'll make sure that you see all of the parts of the presentation perfectly. So see you later, enjoy. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the invitation and introduction. I'm going to share my screen with you for my presentation. If there is any interest in the charts, I will be glad to get in contact with you after the event. I would like to get straight to the point because in an extremely tense and challenging time, there is a lot to report and to consider on the situation and perspective of the rubber industry. The influencing factors about which I would like to lose a few moments in comments in the following are complex and the rubber world is currently very complex too. Today, the focus will certainly be on the consideration of demand, demand and raw material supply. However, I do not want to ignore transformation, regulation, megatrends and competitiveness. But let's start uh, with a, a brief classification. The rubber industry, as we understand it, is an is industrial supplier branch that is heavily, 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 sorry, heavily dependent on global corporations, both on the supplier side and on the customer side. You see Saudi Aramco and Chem China as examples uh, on the supplier side. And on the other side for uh, the uh, customers, we have the, the big car manufacturers. The industry itself, on the other hand, is with a few exceptions, mainly the tire manufacturers, medium-sized. That means the sandwich 
position that we show here. The rubber industry, and this does not only apply to Germany or the German market, has the greatest industrial dependency on the automotive industry. More than 70% of sales go to this account. If you take out the tires, GLG, or it, which means technical products, general rubber goods, still have a good of over 50%. We ourselves, in VDK, which is the National Association of the Manufacturers of Rubber Products, represent around 90% of the industry in Germany, measured in terms of sales. Expressed in numbers, we have 178 member companies with around 75,000 employees, and uh, we have 132 elastomer processors and 46 suppliers within the association. With an annual turnover of around 11 billion euros, a rubber consumption of 700,000 tons, and a production of 1.5 million metric tons of products. All of this annual values of the normal year 2019. 2020, as you see in, in red, um, well, these figures uh, went down heavily. In terms of numbers, we in VDK are a, a, a small group of only seven people, some of whom also have other jobs in the rubber network. Uh, like myself, I'm a chief economist of the VDK, but on the other side, managing director of the Kautschuk Wirtschaftsförderungs GmbH. We come to the demand situation and thus directly to a very difficult area. Here, you have to analyze the individual segments in a very differentiated way, because even if the economy has a as a whole prospers, let me say, it is far from being rosy in our industry. And maybe it's just a leading indicator. Actually, as you see um, with a, uh, a red circle around, um, the extremely positive economy, economic forecasts for 20, 2021 were recently cashed in and pushed back. The cause is not really the dem demand, but the question arises as to how stable it will remain in the view of long waiting times and the actual price developments. But we'll get uh, to that later. So currently, the limiting factors are different. We will come to that as well in more detail. Just a note here, and this is on the right side, production and orders are not in harmony. Basically, it can be said that a noticeable economic recovery is taking hold after the corona gap of last year. This applies across all segments, as we see here, both industrial demand and private consumption. This is the order side not really the uh, producing side, um, and we will have a look at that. Uh, because even in the automobile industry, um, incoming orders are not the problem. Um, please don't be uh, uh, angry that not all of the uh, uh, slides are in um, English. Um, we can do a translation afterwards if there is uh, for specific ones, but this is normally that we put pictures in it so we couldn't translate it. Sorry for that. In the first half of 2021, the German rubber industry was able to record a sales increase of almost 17% compared to 2020. And in some product areas, it was already scratching the results of 2019. Um, you see, there is, of course, a basic effect uh, in the second quarter of 2021 uh, to the second quarter of 2020. And for that, 
for the whole of 2021, we expect sales to grow by 9% compared to 2020, so to a volume of 10.2 billion euros. Uh, and we have in this that we have a, a slight uh, decrease um, in the last quarter of 2021. However, in such volatile times at, as this, the available statistical data are sometimes already out of date when they are published. We have therefore been relying more and more on short-term online member surveys since May last year in order to receive current market data. Our last survey dates from the beginning of October and brings some more illuminating data for the industry that would otherwise be more informative. Up to and including the third quarter of 2021, business in the industry was consistently good or as expected. We're talking about sales, as you see on this slide, uh, we have an average of 16.3% uh, compared to previous year and compared to 2019, uh, a plus of 3.1%. Um, and we are talking about incoming orders and see a similar development as shown in the hard data of the first half of 2021. Compared to previous year in the domestic orders, we have an average of 18.9 percent and to 2019, 4.5 percent. And for the incoming orders from abroad, we have an average of 15.5 percent and 2.2 percent compared to 2019. So good numbers so far. In the trend, however, you can clearly see a difference. The non-automotive sector is still buzzing, while the automotive suppliers, on the other hand, have a colossal drop in demand towards the end of the year. And you see that we have now, in the domestic orders and in the orders abroad, a huge sector or share of 28% or 38% of decrease uh, in the answers of our member companies. This is, or this applies to production as well. Good numbers so far, production in Germany, production abroad, but in the trend two. The, the trend illustrates the dramatic loss of requests from vehicle manufacturers and that applies internationally. You see that we have a degrees of 40% um, on uh, production Germany in the actual trend. In the case of production obstructions, the issue of lack of demand, which is on the left side, um, recently did not exist, but now 35% of the companies report, report about it. And on the right side, uh, or in the middle, sorry, and the associated financing problems are yet to come. The other side of the coin, a lack of raw material and a lack of employees shows it continued to expand vigorously in a non-automotive sector of the rubber industry. I've been asked to pay attention to the international nature of the rubber industry. I would like to do that within the scope of my possibilities, but I have to add that the data transparency for the rubber industry outside Germany and a few European markets is very manageable. But the fact is everywhere. The rubber industry does not have its own original boom. It is, and this applies globally, dependent on the developments in its customer industries, which means around 50% automobile customers around 30% of uh, customers in other industries 
10% construction and mining, and another 10% consumer products from A to Z, roughly over the thumb for general rubber goods. And the charts presented here then also show the same economic trends for foreign rubber markets that we have already seen for the German market. This applies to production in France, Italy, and Spain, um, with a strong decrease of production in 2020. That applies to the global rubber consumption with a strong decrease in 2020 in, in the Americas, uh, in Europe, um, with a smaller uh, decrease in Asia Pacific, where we have the rubber latex uh, gloves and other things that maybe have, uh, there's a, uh, some compensation um, of the losses we see. These data are from IRSG, the International Rubber Study Group in Singapore, and we have another um, statistic which is the worldwide rubber consumption ranking of the top 10. This is uh, um, um, rather static um, over the years, with the Germany on ninth position um, and uh, with many producing countries of natural rubber. So Germany is one of the big ones, the big uh, countries of rubber Process, processing and rubber products. Uh, China is far ahead, uh, and please uh, remain this in mind because it will be another point in a second. Germany produces high-tech rubber and exports to almost every corner of the world, to around 180 of 195 countries in the world. So if any more proof was needed, here it is, rubber is unique and indispensable. What is the demand perspective now? Well, the experts are still largely in agreement on the increase of overall economy. It continues uphill. However, the development in China is a cause for concern and it is not entirely insignificant. You remember? For the most important customer, the automotive industry, the dry spell will probably continue well into next year until a noticeable recovery is achieved. And we think that the downside scenario in the red line will be probably the one we will see in next year. The other industry sectors, however, should be able to continue their expansion paths. We come to the second focus for today, the supply of raw materials. The supply chains are tense all year round and the relief that was speculated on at the end of 2021 is not in sight. As a buyer, you always have the feeling that as soon as you turn, something new and unpredictable is happening behind you. A situation that even long-time industry experts have not yet experienced. Force majeure, explosions, floods, inefficiency and shutdown, there is plenty of everything and for all materials. Globally, the damage caused by Hurricane Ida in the USA led to severe disruptions to the supply of the rubber industry and continues to do so. Around a third of the world's EPDM production is located in the affected areas. The strained logistics chain also has an impact on the supply of raw materials. Ship freight, port terminals, freight traffic, all affected by delays and price explosions. There are currently unprecedented price increases for energy, electricity, shown in this slide, and natural gas, where we have only data up to August, so that will increase by far uh, in the upcoming statistical month. You will certainly follow the political discussion that has flared up in Europe 
but also in Asia. The crude oil market is also showing its cap capers. Recently, there was hardly any fundamental information about a drop in demand to cool the overheated stock market. Instead of a reasonable US dollar, 70 US dollar per barrel, we are approaching the 90 US dollar mark. For all industrial raw materials, including those of the rubber industry, this means shortage management, allocation, long delivery times, and above all, exorbitant price increases. IDICA, we provide corresponding monthly statistics for member companies from which you can see some example price trends, but they all show in the same direction. Synthetic rubbers like SBR, EPDM, CR, silicone or FKM, fillers like uh, carbon black or chemicals like in this uh, case, uh, 6 PPD or uh, others. Here is second time. We have a short view over the German borders. The European raw material price index we compile on a quarterly basis shows parallel developments in France, Italy and Spain. For example, for SBR. Or what is the perspective here now? Well, a lot of what we need comes from China and there will be strong problems beyond the turn of the year. Energy shortage and prescribed climate protection measures Certainly, even stronger around the Olympic Games in Beijing on February 2022 will bring disabilities. The Chinese administration already rules the local production facilities, sometimes or even often, the factory is simply shut down temporarily. We get information from the Chinese market that this happens actually at this moment. The logistical backlog is far from over and is being burdened by the Christmas business. We see here a picture of the LA Harbor where around 70 ships are still waiting, uh, uh, although they are working all around the time. From today's perspective, the ship shortage will continue until at least the third quarter of 2022. And coming to another point, measures and specifications for climate protection leave little room for price mitigation. We see in Germany or in Europe, um, the CO2 um, uh, uh, money we have to pay next year. Of course, The price development has to be analyzed product by product. For some materials, there is a change of price decrease, but others like silicone, FKM, and carbon black are still tending upwards. So much for the two main topics of demand and raw material supply. However, I would like to share a few thoughts with you on the perspective of the rubber industry and start with the area of industrial transformation. Oil. Automotive suppliers in the industry have to face the absolute turn to electromobility. No other music will play in Europe by 2030 at the latest, as uh, e.g. this uh, uh, slide from LMC um, shows. Uh, if you see there is will be no more diesel in 2031. Uh, in its current rubber handbook, Alang Seo has impressively shown what is changing in the area of mobility. The drive technology 
will be different and totally new requirements will be come up for the various factors or areas of this electric mobility. We will need more products concerning the battery, um, the energy storage, and uh, we will have um, more products um, here uh, in on noise, vibration, um, or terminal management. These changes in vehicle technology are having a huge impact on the rubber industry's portfolio in this area. New customer requirements, new specifications, and other material compositions or mixtures. In the environmental sector, the EU has, Germany has, and maybe the world has big plans. This is then immediately, immediately reflected in the area of regulation. We will come to that. But the economy is anticipating some things. For example, GADSL. The OEMs require their suppliers to ban any type of hazardous substance. A huge topic for the rubber industry, a very huge topic. As Vedika, we have strong ties with the DH, DHK in Hannover. Professor Giese will certainly give important lectures on the hot topics soon, also at the Vedika Autumn Conference on November 18th. We have already touched on the subject of regulation. Only a moment more on it. Early manageable network of specifications and projects, especially with the European chemicals legislation reach or generally within the framework of the Green Deal, um, will come to the or will affect the rubber industry. Let me get one, one, one step back to um, reach regulation where we have um, many subjects already at the moment with bisphenol, silicone or other things, uh, peroxide or SBR. So there will come more and more points because we will have a change from the so-called old chemistry to a new one, biobasic or other things, but there will, we will be affected um, uh, with this all within the framework of the Green Deal. And in Germany, there's also a new government with ambitions. There will be something new, new um, that is for sure. I've already touched on a few mega trends, but that is by no means all. I said at the beginning that it is complex. And this certainly includes the consideration of the entire value chain as a processor. As a processor, we will have a look at the raw materials, at the um, process uh, in foreign countries, uh, at the logistics, at our own process, um, on the life cycle, and on the end of life. All that has to be uh, taken into consideration. Compliance with and implementation of SDGs in terms of sustainability. I think everybody has been in contact already with some of these sustainability, sustainable development goals. A big point or mega trend for the rubber industry in future will be um, the move towards products that can be recycled. On our website you will find a brochure moving in circles where we have put some information and data on this for the rubber industry. Next and also a very important point is the proof of your own internal and and that is the point, external, uh, downstream and upstream activities, um, CO2 footprint. And last but not least, 
the digitalization of processes and products probably within the with uh, 3d printing would it then be enough for a company to be competitive we asked ourselves this question in Vidikar's agenda 2027 and we came to the result that there are opportunities because one thing is clear there will be a permanent demand for elastic materials and products but we see more sales potential abroad and we fear and fight for the germ for germany as a rubber location you see we have uh, some scenarios here and uh, for uh, for example the automotive sector we see a decrease in the coming upcoming years uh, um, on the domestic sales the companies are certainly better off than the location as you see on the left side uh, of this slide we see that there is a decrease for the location germany more or less and there is more chance for an increase uh, for the companies we are fighting for that and we know and communicate the high-tech industry rubber industry belongs to germany that is sustainable and the best environmental and climate protection better than bringing this industry abroad with our political work we aim at the competitive competitiveness of the rubber industry in germany current elements are our election test stones and we will shortly begin with the statements and positions of the coalition agreements of the new government appreciation for value creation appreciation for science maintain and strengthen the industrial location which are our main positions and with appreciation for added value in the rubber industry as a basic basis of competitiveness i will say thank you very much and um, i'm happy and glad to answer your questions thank you until the presentation we've received several questions uh, unfortunately we cannot answer all of these questions therefore we have selected three of those questions which then uh, i will ask you and all other questions we will ask or we will discuss later on one by one so uh, please feel free also afterwards after the presentation when you have some questions then feel free to ask these questions and we will go get in contact and we'll try also to manage everything and uh, do everything that no question will remain unsolved. Then let's come to the first question. The first question is dealing with EPDM. You've already uh, shown in your, during your presentation that EPDM is uh, a little bit affected also concerning some catastrophes, what we've seen so far. Uh, what did you think uh, concerning the increase of the price? And where did you think is the maximum and when we will reach this maximum in the field of EPDM? Okay, uh, thank you for this difficult uh, question. Where is the EPDM price going? Um, like so many things in these very turbulent times, uh, I think this cannot be exactly predicted. But if you look at the development of the rising contract prices for the feedstocks ethylene and propylene, you have to assume that the price will rise further. Um, I think another point is the reduction in the supply landscape due to the withdrawal of Sumitomo chemicals at the end of next year could also uh, have a price driving effect. On the other hand, Especially, especially if there is no demand in the or less demand in the automotive industry, and we have sufficiently high global capacity, there might be also um, some room for a decline. So, however, based on the experience of the current year, 
we actually assume that we will see an increase in this quarter and initially expect a level uh, in 2022, at least at the level of the final quarter of 2021. Okay, so thank you very much on your uh, opinion in the field of EPDM and uh, also on, this, on your thoughts. Um, then we will directly come to the second question. The second question is dealing with uh, the reach. Um, you have also shown us that uh, several categories will be affected and also several materials or chemicals are on the list also for reach regulations. Uh, in your opinion, especially when we consider processing agents, what did you think uh, will be affected here next? Um, there are a few points that can be made on this question. Um, in the case of Perxit systems, there's already regulation in the area of drinking water and a prolonged food contact. And we see there in this context current uh, two ways or two things are, uh, that we expect. First one is an extension of the regulations to other areas of application by the uh, legislature. And we see an increase of uh, customer requirements. In my presentation, uh, I already referred to the GADSL system used by the automobile manufacturers. Um, and I think we, need, we expect demands from this direction. Um, another example, um, in this reach context are uh, anti-agent agents, uh, anti-aging agents, sorry, based on phenyl. As you know, 6-PPD is the most uh, common antioxidant and uh, also um, anti ozonant in the rub industry. Um, its combinatorial effect is high efficiency and uh, the economy make it difficult to dispense with many high quality products. And as you surely know, however, CPPD is discussed in connection with reach restrictions. Due to the substance itself, um, the reactions of the products and the migration in water and soil from elastomers and semi-finished products. So um, there is a big topic. And other things, we continue to expect that polyfluorinated carbon silix acids, bisphenol, silicones, ozone protection, and probably the classification of SBR uh, as a water polluting uh, substance uh, will be affected by the increasing reach uh, regulation. So there are many uh, points and uh, the whole thing is in motion and uh, it is closely followed and accompanied by the lady car. I'm not really the expert within our team, uh, but however, I would be glad to put you in touch with my colleagues who are responsible on these topics. Thank you very much. Also, thank you very much uh, for the offer that we or uh, the audience can also can come in touch with you afterwards. Um, if you've already mentioned in your answer for the second question, the automotive industry, and this brings us directly to the third one. As you also have shown during the presentation, the automotive industry is struggling. And here, it would be very interesting uh, to hear your opinion uh, in terms of the supplier. What can you say about this field? Well, this is really um, an explosive situation for the automotive, automotive suppliers of our industry at the moment. Um, we see a, a toxic cocktail um, of the requirement to be able to deliver with the enormous costs shown for raw material logistics and energy, so in my presentation, and on the other uh, hand, short-term cancellation by the OEMs in a massive scale. Um, high double-digit percentages of requests are cut with, within one or two days. 
actually. Um, um, in any case, the systematically stored data can, can hardly be trusted at the moment. But on the other hand, there is no other communication by the OEMs. So you have to believe probably to this data in the systems, but you know that they are not correct, but you don't get any information what is the correct figure or the correct number um, of uh, um, uh, pieces you have to uh, deliver. And uh, this is quite a, a, a dilemma, an absolute dilemma. Uh, and this is boosted. Sorry, I have to just a second. I didn't stop. I didn't stop my telephone. Just uh, no problem. For the moment. Um, so I, I saw. I, I said that this is an absolute dilemma, um, and it is boosted by the fact that the OEMs hardly or only inadequately uh, accept their own cost increases for materials. So um, the suppliers have to uh, uh, read this uh, uh, cost. Moreover, the OEMs, and that is what we uh, recognize at the moment, on their part, they insist, for example, on charges for logistic boxes that are, due to the situation, not in use. Or the OEMs do not pre-finance tools and development services, or still demand the discounts. Uh, so it is very, uh, very uh, hard situation for our suppliers. The rest of this year will be extremely difficult for the suppliers, uh, and it doesn't seem to get much better in the first six to nine months of uh, 2022 either. Um, there is a threat of liquidity collapse. Short time work is the rule again, and bankruptcies are unfortunately not unlikely. And as you have probably also noticed, at Hennigers in Germany, it is already a reality. So a very hard uh, uh, situation, and it will take some time um, to get out of this, let's say, uh, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much on your opinion. Yes, I think it's really a toxic cocktail. And at the end, we have to see what's coming, coming up next. Um, finally, Mr. Bertel, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Thank you very much for your time. And also to our audience, uh, thank you very much for your time and that you are participating and also that you have uh, answered so much questions. As uh, we just noted, or I just noted before, there will be also one more time the contact addresses. So if you also have questions, maybe after this presentation, feel free to directly contact us, and then we will try to solve all open questions. Great, then um, finally, after this successful start, I'm very happy that everything uh, finally was running. Uh, with a little bit stops in between, but yeah, that's the unfortunate thing with the live sessions. However, uh, we would be very happy to welcome you also next week. And next week on Thursday, we will have a great presentation on the rentability in rubber injection molding. And as today, we will have the first presentation at 10 a.m. in the morning in German and at 3 p.m. in English as today. So I'm looking forward to it and I hope I see all of you next week or hear all of you next week. And then uh, at the end, uh, the only thing what's left over is that I wish you a nice Thursday and then also a nice weekend. So here and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.